everyone and welcome to the Beeper Academy Bite Size Module. I'm Emma Shatliff, Manager of the Beeper Academy. In today's session, we'll be discussing the role line managers can play to support those experiencing fertility challenges in the workplace. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Samantha Wilde, Clinical Lead for Women's Health at Beeper. Thanks for joining me today, Sam. Thank you for having me, Emma. So let's get started uh, with the first question. Around one in every seven couples will have problems conceiving despite trying for a year or more. How might fertility challenges impact those people in the workplace? So experiencing difficulties conceiving can be distressing and all-consuming and can impact every aspect of someone's life, both at home and at work. Um, and it can be one of the biggest emotional challenges that someone may face. And so understandably, this can affect their mental health. It can leave them feeling depressed and anxious and, and ashamed of failure, really. They're, they're worried about the stigma. Um, and this can lead to employees considering leaving their job because of the stresses of the treatment, um, having more time off work with absence and reduced engagement um, whilst they're in work too. They can't think about anything else. Um, and I must just emphasise that um, a lot of fertility problems are also male in origin. They're just as likely to be male in origin, but we often regard this as a female issue. So we need to be thinking about men here as well um, and, you know, female partners of, of women too. It can affect everybody. You know, everybody goes through the grieving process as they're trying to conceive. Um, and so, you know, this is something that, that we need to consider with all our employees. Um, these negative effects can affect their relationships, it can affect their work life and their mental health, but they're often overlooked. Um, and partners often feel that they have to be the strong one in these cases, um, that they need to be there for the other one, that they may feel quite hopeless and, and feel that they, they're not able to support the, the partner um, and they feel quite guilty about it too. So understandably, they may feel quite isolated and we need to ensure that support isn't just geared up for women, but it is geared up for all. I think fertility is one of those things that, you know, in the workplace can be quite hard, especially if someone get, recently gets married or that people, colleagues know that someone's been in a long-term relationship because inevitably the questions are going to come. Oh, when are you going to try for a baby or any thoughts of starting a family? And I suppose that can be really difficult for someone to hear if they know, you know, behind the scenes they are having those fertility challenges. Is that something that you're, you see? That's a really good point, Emma. And, and yes, we do see exactly that. And, and it's not coming from a, a bad place, is no. it? You know, um, you know, it, it's understandable that, that people are going to be interested and, and just making conversation. But yeah, it, it's really important that we are all aware that, that people may be having issues that we don't know about. So why, why do you think it's so important for organisations and line managers to support employees facing fertility challenges in the workplace? So research shows that 84% of people undergoing fertility treatment found that it affected their day-to-day -day work and 15% have had to reduce their hours or, or quit work altogether. And yet they often feel very reluctant to speak about how they're feeling at work due to concerns about the stigma, that it may have a detrimental effect on their career or that someone might not understand what they're going through. So if we can address these needs within the workplace and provide better support, organisations can play a vital role in creating an inclusive and supportive environment to look after everybody's needs. Um, we'll be able to therefore support all individuals throughout their careers, throughout these various life chapters and stages, and have a better chance of attracting and retaining the talent. Definitely, and I think, uh, as you've already alluded to, it affects both males and females um, as well. And some people have then to go down that, you know, IVF route for their fertility treatment. So is there any advice that you could give to a manager on how best to support an employee on their IVF journey? Because I know, speaking from experience, that is an emotional time. And actually having that support at work can be... Um, you know, really valuable. Absolutely invaluable, yes. Yeah. So I think important for um, people to understand what IVF involves. So um, as you'll know, Emma, it involves taking medication to encourage your ovaries to stimulate lots of eggs. Um, and these eggs are then fertilised outside the body before being placed back into the womb to grow. And this whole process can take one or two months and, and might unfortunately have to be repeated several times as well. So people are constantly on cycles of treatment. And how successful it is will, will vary depending on a lot of factors. Um, and so it might be that the colleague doesn't want to disclose to you what they're going through. Um, you know, it is a personal issue, but if you are a line manager and, and um, your employee does want to talk to you about it, then first of all, I would say, obviously, take it very seriously. 
be very sensitive um, to what they're saying um, and be sympathetic as well. Um, obviously, you need to keep it completely confidential too. This isn't something I'd expect you to be talking to anybody else about unless unless they want you to. And it might be that they want you to talk to, to other colleagues about it so that they don't have to. Um, listen to what they're saying. Um, try not to um, you know, give any medical advice. You're not their doctor. And also try not to give any lifestyle advice either. They've got other people to tell them that. Try not to give them too many success stories. Again, this, this might not be the time or the place to do that. It might not be what they want to hear at this moment. And, and you know, don't tell them to be positive either. Um, you know, it, it really won't be well received. So you're just there really to support, to ask what they might need and then to hopefully, you know, be able to provide that for them. Um, and, and yeah, think about what, what they might want. So it might be that they need some flexible working. Um, they might need to have um, some paid and some unpaid time off. There's no statutory right to time off um, while somebody's going through IVF, but it might be that you know your organisational policy can make a difference here. Um, it may be that they could use annual leave as well. Think about what mental health support you've got that you can offer them. Um, so talk about your, your EAP. Um, and also think about what there is within the office environment that they might need. So some women may need to have um, a quiet space, a quiet room where they could go if they were feeling sick, for example. They might need to inject themselves. They might need to have a fridge to keep an injection in. So again, asking them what their exact needs are will help you with planning for that. Um, and also think about where exactly they are in their career and if there's anything you can do at this stage to support it. Now, some women might choose to actually um, temporarily move to a less stressful position um, whilst they're going through the treatment with a view to getting back on track in the future. Other women would rather that it didn't affect their work at this point. It gives them something else to focus on and will want to carry on with the same career track. Um, so it's very individualised. So you just need to listen to the employee um, and let them tell you what they want. I think that's great advice. And I think one of the reasons people don't feel comfortable opening up in those first, you know, that, that first beginning or the beginning of the journey is because they don't want to become office gossip. You know, it's very different if someone's off with something that's visible, like a broken leg. But when someone's going through something quite so personal as IVF treatment, you don't want it to be a discussion point, you know, amongst managers and things like that. So I know personally, that's one of the reasons I suppose when I went through my IVF journey, I didn't tell anybody because I just didn't want anyone to know. And I was afraid that maybe managers would break that confidence, which probably wouldn't have happened but you can't help these irrational thoughts when you're going through such an emotional journey. Exactly, and that's why we really need to normalise the conversation within the workplace so that you can see how it's been handled for others and feel far more comfortable to then share your own experiences. Definitely, I think that's a great point there that, that you've raised, Sam. And according to Miscarriage Association 2021, tragically more than one in five pregnancies end in miscarriage, so probably a quarter of a million in the UK each year. So what advice could you give to managers on supporting employees after pregnancy loss? So this can naturally be devastating. Um, we need to consider that both parents may need to have some time off work, um, flexibility and a lot of understanding from their employer and from their colleagues as well. Um, again, people handle things differently, so some people may want to come back to work as quickly as possible, whereas others may need to have some more time to grieve. Um, currently, legislation doesn't provide any statutory entitlement to paid leave for the parents of a baby that is lost before 24 weeks of pregnancy, um, so we need to bear that in mind. Um, and so for a lot of women, they can only take statutory sick pay, sick pay which will obviously be you know, a lot less than, than their usual earnings. Um, so businesses should have a clear miscarriage policy to prevent employees from feeling rushed back into work too soon um, after they've experienced their miscarriage. Again, a supportive and an open environment um, in the workplace will, will help to make the subject feel less taboo. Um, recognising again that it's not just the female going through this, that the partner will need support as well. Um, and we do know that employees that feel more supported during difficult times in their life are more likely to remain 
with the business longer term. You know, they're, they're going to repay that loyalty. Um, so I think do all you can, you know, again, give that support, signpost and work with charities where you can too. Tommy's is an excellent charity that offers specialised management training and support. So do all that you can to support these women um, and their partners at this difficult time. So lastly, Sam, before we uh, finish for today, can you summarise how organisations and line managers can better support employees through fertility and miscarriage treatment in the workplace? So firstly, raise awareness across the workforce. Um, introduce a, an IVF and fertility policy and a miscarriage policy as well if you can. Be able to offer those flexible working hours and, and other things that women may feel that they need to support them uh, to continue working. Create that open um, and supportive, inclusive culture. Train the managers to be able to support their um, employees. Um, offer fertility benefits if you can in the form of, say, financial help and loans. And finally, signpost services such as EAP and some of those charities that I've mentioned. From personal experience, Sam, um, it's great to hear that, you know, these conversations are now taking place more than ever in the workplace and, you know, organisations are looking to provide that support to their employees. Uh, so I found today's conversation really interesting. So thanks very much for joining me. Not at all. Thank you for having me.